Hello, my name is AJ Aziz and I'm here with Juan Burnell and Kieran Dylan Davidson. Today we'll be exploring how the Kyoto Protocol has affected the amount of greenhouse gases produced by the different countries using GAP miners data to analyze visible trends on yearly CO2 emissions in thousands of metric tons. The Kyoto Protocol was adopted in 1997 as an extension of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, UNFCCC with the sole purpose of creating clear goals to reduce the level of greenhouse gases in an attempt to stop the effects of climate change. The protocol was adopted in Kyoto, Japan on December 11, 1997 and entered into force on February 16, 2005. The protocol's first commitment period began in 2008 when 39 countries set their 2012 emissions levels to a certain percent of their country's 1990 emissions. Since its inception, the Kyoto Protocol has been touted as the biggest step towards climate change regulation in modern times, particularly because countries that ratified it entered legally binding commitments to reduce their emissions of greenhouse gases. The first country that we'll be analyzing is the United States. The U.S. is a country with the second highest CO2 emissions in the world, contributing approximately 16% of all annual carbon emissions. Over two-thirds of all of the U.S.'s annual carbon emissions stem directly from electricity production and transportation. However, the U.S. stands in a very particular position in relation to the other 38 countries that participated in the first commitment period. While the U.S. agreed to lower their emissions by 6%, to 94% of the original 1990 levels during the first commitment period, the U.S. Congress never ratified the country's participation in the Kyoto Protocol, meaning that the U.S. never became a formal member and was thus not bound by the legal requirements to lower its emissions. As we can see in the graph, the U.S. emission actually rapidly rose until 2007. By the end of the first commitment period in 2012, the U.S.'s CO2 emissions were actually 7.42% above their original 1990 levels. While social consciousness for the environment has been greatly emphasized in recent years, no clear action has been taken by the government. The main detractor from government action against emissions is perceived negative effects that emissions reduction would have on the economy. However, it is clear to see that it is not so. Two countries with comparable industrialized economies, Germany and the United Kingdom, who followed through with their first commitment period goals, saw no real negative economic downturn directly resulting from emissions reduction as seen as in the graph. Russia was also a signatory party to the Kyoto Protocol and, like most of Eastern Europe, had more success than Western European countries. Russia managed to beat its original goal to maintain 1990 emissions levels reflected by this graph, which shows a 23.4% decrease in the CO2 emissions. Overall, Russia saw greenhouse gas reduction of 34.1%. However, the data in this case are slightly deceptive. For Russia, the period during which CO2 emissions declined most rapidly directly coincided with the period of economic turmoil leading up to and following the dissolution of the Soviet Union in 1991. From 1990 until around 1999, yearly CO2 emissions declined from 2.356 billion to a low of 1.527 billion metric tons. This was accompanied by a per capita GDP decrease from $19,180 to $11,030 and a decrease in energy use and production. After 1990, however, both GDP and CO2 emissions steadily but slowly increased, as did energy use and production. Despite the ideological aims of the protocol, during the years of the first commitment period, Russia's CO2 emissions actually increased slightly. And in 2012, Russia announced its withdrawal from the Kyoto Protocol. This raises the question of whether Russia can keep greenhouse gas emissions low while sustaining economic growth. There is some reason for hope, since over the past two decades, Russia has seen a rise in GDP and a decrease in emissions. But the issue may be more complex, and as the economic effects of climate change manifest more frequently and severely, countries will need to reevaluate the trade-off between environmental responsibility and potentially harmful drivers of GDP. Germany, the third signatory member we will be analyzing, surpassed its goal from the first Kyoto Protocol commitment period by more than three times. At the end of the first commitment period, the country had decreased their CO2 emissions by between 27 and 28 percent. This drop can largely be attributed to Germany's emphasis on renewable energy resources such as wind and solar, and its formalized Enerwende policy ratified in 2010 to describe its greenhouse gas production. While Germany's high energy consumption is due to the severity of its winters, meaning that reducing its dependence on coal and gas could have been the, a major challenge, the effect has been reduced because the fall of communism and subsequent reunification of East and West Germany spurred many government initiatives for sustainable GDP growth. 
In the future, Germany plans to continue on its path toward completely switching to renewable energy, and we will see if the country can keep decreasing its emissions in the second commitment period.